injury report will come out uh, this afternoon, but there's nothing of any real note to report of anyway. Um, at this point, um, sort of expect uh, all hands on deck that are available to, to practice in some form. Uh, so feel good about that. Uh, Jets coming into town, a really, really good football team. Uh, have a, have a, had a tough, tough matchup against the, the Niners on Monday night. Game kind of got away from them a, a little bit as the game wore on, but uh, a team that I got a tremendous amount of respect for. Uh, their defense over the last handful of years has been uh, certainly one of the top five in almost every category. Uh, they got excellent talent in the secondary. They got a really good front. They got two really good linebackers. Um, it's a it's a formidable opponent on defense. Offensively, they got you know one of the best runners in football. I think as as far as talent catching the ball. Um, they got a really good young receiver and obviously a Hall of Fame quarterback that is uh, leading the show there. So really, really good coaching staff, guys that I know really well, a lot of people that, I, that I've come across in my career, um, guys that I got a lot of respect for. They'll be ready to roll on a short week, uh, and they'll, be, they'll give us as good a test as anybody. So looking forward to it, looking forward to the challenge, um, but we're gonna, going up against a very, very good defense um, and an offense with a Hall of Fame quarterback. So uh, we got a work cut out for us this week. Chance. What's the switch, I guess, in facing a, a guy like Caleb Williams last week who making his first start to going against a guy who's been playing for 20 years and has seen everything? Um, the biggest difference usually is that they have seen everything, and so there's not a lot of hiding. Um, most of these quarterbacks that have played long enough at the level that he's played at, um, you don't really fool them very often. So you just you got to be sound in what you're doing and how you do it. Um, you can try your best uh, to, to make it hard on them, but for the most part, um, there's not a lot of things that he hasn't seen. And so it's all going to be about how we play fundamentally, um, how we execute our one-on-ones, how we stop the run, how we make sure that our, our rushing coverage are tied together. Those things are, you know, the fundamentals is what really matters the most. And um, trying to trick a guy like that is not going to usually go very well for you. For you as a play caller, how much does when you go against a team that has a corner that could get in that cat coverage, how much does that impact your game plan? You're aware of it. It, it. it impacts it some. You're trying to make sure um, you have the right things for the right guys. And, and the guy that's going to get followed has a chance to go win. And, and I think Sauce Gardner is, is a premier cover corner in this league. He's, he's um, as good as anybody out there. And, and we'll have our work cut out for us. We'll see how they choose to deploy him. I know he's followed guys in the past. Um, within their scheme, they have different things they do with them. And we just have to make sure that, that we're on, on top of our matchups and how we're setting up our offense that uh, we give guys that have a chance to go win. And, and look, we'll have guys that will have a chance to go play one-on-one -on -one against him too. And I know our guys aren't scared of it, and um, we're looking forward to the challenge. We won around the league. Offense was down kind of across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard Kirk Herbstreet talking yesterday about how he thinks that September football is kind of being treated like August football used to, less and less guys playing in the preseason. Does that ring true to you? And if so, do you think it would behoove teams to – be a little bit more ready for week one? Hard to say. I, I know I felt like we needed to play. I mean, our starters played uh, a handful in this preseason. Um, I felt like that was necessary. Um, I think it paid off for us early, you know, in the game. And, and we, we came out and played well to start, uh, which was good. Um, hard to say every, across the league if that's a unanimous thing that you can, you can make a statement about or not. Um, I do think every year, though, the month of September is always – revealing about what your football team is and uh, there's going to and it's usually not one or two games it's usually three or four that first part of the season you're finding out um, what your team is is made of and what they're all about and what they do well and don't do well and there's really no other way to find that out other than playing NFL football games and even in the preseason it's not real because you're not always going you know starters on starters for for multiple drives so it's a it's a Every year is a learning process. Even if you have a lot of returning players, um, it's still a learning process about what that team, that year's team, is going to look like and be like. And um, it's one that we pay a lot of attention to, particularly in the early part of the season, on uh, how we how we use players, what they do well, and and what our team's identity forms as. Um, and you hope that that it's the right way. What did you coach, um, I know you coached through a couple of slow starts in Cincinnati too. In your experience, what is the key to turning things around when things don't start as hot as you'd like? Um, the things that well, Cincinnati, the things that helped us the most is that one, we had a really good staff and I think we have one here, uh, where you are constantly in the first part of the part of the season, uh, evaluating what it is that you do well. And then once you kind of find what that identity is of your team, you lean into it. And 
that is an ongoing process over the whole year. But usually in this first couple of weeks, you find out a lot of things. And I think that uh, you rely on people's thoughts and ideas and viewpoints on, on their positions, on their units, offense, defense, and special teams. And um, you just have to be willing to be flexible and adaptable and not afraid to say what we thought we were going to be isn't true and we need to do something different. And that was what we did in Cincinnati, uh, especially when we first got there. We were a under center wide zone team. The arrival of Joe Burrow changed that. We tried to do a little bit of both. Uh, turns out for whatever, and again, every year it changes. Uh, your talent acquisition changes, and we ended up becoming a shotgun team and a gap scheme team And as the year went along. and So anyway, long story short, there's, a, there's an evolution that takes place in the first part of the season, and you have to be willing um, to know when to pivot and to adapt. Guys who are holdovers here haven't been part of, uh, on offense, haven't been part of much scoring in the second half. Um, mm -hmm. I think the worst team in the league over the last two years. How, how Thanks you, for that this morning, Paul. Appreciate it. How do you win the halftime adjustments, and and what's the key in in your experience to, to being a better second half off? Um, I I've said this before, and I, and I I do stick to it that these adjustments usually are made kind of in between series, and I think that the teams that have the best chance to adjust adjust fast, um, and I think that. As we get working together as a staff, I think we'll adjust faster and do a better job. Uh, I need to do a better job than I did in the second half for sure. Um, so there's there's a there's a, a staying ahead of the of the turn essentially before uh, adjusting before the other team does, and so that's kind of a constant process from the first series of the game um, through the last. And so the halftime thing, I think it's a little bit skewed, um, but certainly the numbers, whatever those are, bear it out that it's not been very good. So. Uh, those are things that we have to look at too, as a, as a staff and as a as a offense and defense and special teams unit on where we can uh, improve that. And if it be can, becomes a theme for us this year, uh, then we got to figure out how we can change it, whatever that is. Kelly, so if you can build on the offensive line wise, and, and what do you need to kind of shore up on the offensive line going? Forward? Certainly can build on the way we ran the ball early in the game. Uh, that was really uh, a, a nice showing by those guys up front. Um, you saw the the power that, that Pete and JC have on a handful of combinations. And um, we did a really a pretty good job in the run game early. Um, the one that we got to get better at is the pass pro. Uh, we gave up too much too much pressure, too much leakage, um, some th and things that are correctable that we need to correct. It's There's some technique things and some awareness things that need to get better. But um, certainly our pass protection stands to improve. And not that the run game doesn't at all needs to improve, but I, I just think that the positives were for us up front were in the run game and the negatives were uh, in our pass protection the patience with that though with pass pro in in a rookie like JC Latham where you know that's going to be something that's going to take a little bit longer to adjust to um, and how confident do you feel having Bill here to kind of help maybe that process speed up a little bit more yeah I think that every every young offensive lineman I think struggles um, because there's just no again there's no simulating what it feels like on game day um, even in practice it's not the same uh, and you face different styles of rushers. And so when you're in training camp, you practice against the same couple of guys and you start to, you get to know their moves and their counters and you get better at playing them. Um, but when you start to see a different rusher and different techniques and rush plans every week, it changes. And that's, I think, what separates the guys that are pros um, versus the guys that don't know it quite yet on, on how that process works every week to get ready to play. Um, certainly don't have anybody better, I think, in there helping them get ready than, than my dad. But um, there's, there's a patience factor and there's a, a growth factor that's involved. And uh, it's on it's on us to improve them, and it's on the player to continue to make sure they're doing everything they can do to make that growth stay on a steady rise. Um, because there's there's a lot of work to do every single day we walk in here. How similar is that for Will as a young player? I mean, he just made his tenth start, mm -hmm. and how much of corrections and, and that improvement of footwork that was mentioned on Monday can only happen in games for a quarterback? That's that's really what it is, and and you coach off of those clips, and you hope that. Um, when when the quarterbacks watch and look back and feel it, he, he feels the things that we're talking about, which Will does. Um, and so now you have something to work with. Now that they've they've feel it again, um, they understand. And then when you make the coaching points, it makes more sense. And, and then you hope to see it translate. And you work on it in practice and you drill it. And just like anything, you're always drilling something that involves your improvement in the game. And uh, we very rarely ever go out there at any position and do drill work that is just to do it. It's all very focused on how do we improve some aspect of – where we're playing in the game, what we're asking guys to do. So um, the drill work's really important. We spend a lot of time thinking about it and how to implement it. And so that part is where you hope to see the improvement in practice. And then it's, he's got to go do it in the game. You know, coaching's evolved a great deal since, say, your, your dad started it in the league. 
but and, and that guy, different guys get their buttons pushed in different ways. Mm -hmm. do, do guys who make big mistakes or repeat mistakes still get yelled at? Is, is there value at sometimes to getting in a guy at a guy? Yeah, that way? absolutely, there is. There's always value uh, in in messaging at the right time. Um, Again, I'll always lean on teaching first. Uh, I like to correct mistakes. I like to be very clear about the expectation. This is what we expected. This wasn't didn't meet it. Um, and then find out why. What 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 about it is is what we're asking too difficult? Is uh, are you not getting enough work at it? Do you? So there's a there's a, a give and take on our end where I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in being a problem solver, not a problem creator. And uh, you try to solve the problem first. And then as you've solved the problem and you get the things down and people feel good about where it's at, if you make the same mistakes again, um, then it becomes frustrating. And that's where uh, maybe your tone changes in the messaging. So I've had plenty of moments as a coordinator and as a position coach where um, it's, it's rare. It doesn't happen a lot. But, you know, there's a time and a place sometimes for, for that type of messaging and that tone and that intensity. Um, and when it is, you use it. And after some of the mistakes that were made Sunday? Not after Sunday. It was that's more. It was week one. There's a lot of teaching involved, and um, particularly on offense, us being a pretty young unit, there's uh, a lot of things. A lot of things that maybe even you guys don't see as, as much of. The glaring things are the glaring things, but there's a lot of stuff we got to get better at, myself included. Um, and so we we do our best to just attack that and get better at it and focus on those things as opposed to the messaging of it. Half of Will's passes on Sunday were thrown either behind the line of scrimmage or within five mm -hmm. yards of the line of scrimmage. Was that by design as part of those high percentage looks or more of a result of pressure, coverage, other defensive factors? All of it is the best answer, yes. Um, yeah, there's there's some of it was by design. Some of it was by uh, the, the pressure that we faced, and I was trying to make sure that, that we could get the ball off. Um, I was trying to maintain some aggressiveness in the pass game, uh, even with a lead. And it wasn't as productive as I was would have hoped it would have been. Um, but yeah, there's all those things factor in when you're when you're in the past game. And um, the way the pressure came over the course of the game, I was just trying to be mindful about uh, what I was what position I was putting those guys up front in and putting Will in. So um, those are all a part of the process. It's not the sole reason, but um, yeah, all those things factor in. Aside from the interception, how was Will's processing of throw it here, not there, on his reads and? audibling into or out of plays that might, you know, may or, you know, might be bad. Yeah, he did a really good job with that part of it. Um, I think if, if we can, if he can clean up his minor footwork issues, I think it's gonna make things a lot easier on him. And I think that that'll be the case. I think he knew uh, what to do, how to do it, where to go with the ball. And then for the most part of that game, it was pretty spot on. Um, his demeanor, his recognition, his ability to communicate those things to me uh, were also really good. And so it was good to see Will in a game day environment when it's on the road, when it's loud and kind of hectic. Um, I felt the I felt the calmness to his demeanor, which was uh, good. It was positive. Um, and then his ability to articulate what he was seeing was what was happening. Sometimes guys articulate things and it's not what's actually happening. He could very clearly articulate what was going on um, from the defensive side. And that was really good to see. And so we'll just keep keep working through it, keep working through the process of, of the fundamental part of getting better. And um, I'm really feel good about that part of, of where Will was at on Sunday. That was the positive part for sure. You hear so many quarterbacks talk about the interior pressure, Aaron Rodgers included. Like that's the thing that they hate the most. From your perspective, why is it that that's such, so detrimental to, to a quarterback? Because you can, you can deal with edge rushers and edge pressure. Um, you can help on the edge. Not to say that they don't get their work. They do. It's it's hard to block those guys. But quarterbacks generally feel like as long as there's width to the pocket and the rush is coming up the field, they can find a lane to throw the ball from. When you get vertical push from inside, it, it doesn't allow the quarterback to slide and move and see the field the way they want to. And so as these guards get pushed back or the pocket collapses in the interior, there's nowhere to go because quarterbacks are always, almost always instructed. You never leave out the back of the pocket because that's where the edge rushers uh, get a chance to, to bring it down. So the more interior pressure you have, the harder it is to feel like you have a place to move in the pocket. Um, and so I think that's why you've seen a, uh, a shift uh, some with the, 
the really dominant players in the league right now are the interior players, the Chris Joneses of the world and the Quinnen Williams and guys that can really get after um, the interior part of the pocket. And the other factor of that, too, is there's usually three on two inside. So you have a center and a guard and two tackles. Um, and then a lot of what you see now is all the fronts starting to uh, cover up your center, make one-on-ones on the inside, less so about the outside. So if you have disruptive interior rush or disruptive interior blitz plan, I know quarter, every quarterback I've ever been around um, tends to prefer just the edge rush to an interior rush. For an opponent that struggled in a phase like the Jets did against the run the other day, is that almost harder to prepare for because you expect them to make an adjustment, or is it you can usually trust what you saw? Um, no, I think you. I think every week's a new week. Um, and and look, the the Forty Nineers have gotten after a lot of people. Um, it's a really it's a really good football team. Um, so sometimes when you when they're playing against the 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 better teams in the league too, it's hard to judge what it's going to look like for you. If you know the the Niners are a Super Bowl football team. I mean, they've been to Super Bowls. Um, they've got a roster that's capable of it. And so sometimes it's hard to judge on whether they just had a really hot day. Uh, or, or that's really what the defense is. And so I think you just take it for what it is and you use the collective whole of, of all the tape you study and, and you don't base it on one game or another um, because it was that was a tough game for them all the way out Monday night on the road in California. Uh, a lot of factors go into that, and, and I'm sure that they will be uh, more than ready to come play on Sunday here in Nashville. Do you have to be on a pitch count again this week or, or – Likely to be closer to full? Likely to be closer to full. Um, still be mindful of, of what we're asking as he gets in shape and starts to feel better and better. Um, but yeah, I see his role increasing. Um, his role in, pr in practice so should practice more. Role should increase, should feel a lot better about where he's at this Sunday versus last. Kind of in that return to play uh, protocol where he mm -hmm. might be trying to do more each each week. Yeah, he's in the same place. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he practices. Uh, the expectation is that he's, you know, got a chance to play this week, and he's going to practice, and we'll see where he's at. You said in the past you've had to pivot from what you thought the team would be to what the team is. So, seeing your scheme play out in that first game, how do you think that fits these players and their talents, and what you'd like for them to do in that offense? Yeah, still, it's a, it's still a process. You know, I, I don't know that I uh, have. <laughs> oh, good. We find a lot of money for that thing around here. Um, I would say that it's it's still a work in process. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, I have an idea of, of some of the things that I really like and things that we do do well and we did well in the game. Um, that was also one game plan against a, a different, we're playing a different structured style of defense. And so um, we're going to keep continuing to see. And um, I do have things that I've learned about some guys over the course of that game that um, I didn't maybe know prior to, and that's a good thing, and it can help me keep putting them in a better position. So um, I would say one game is a small sample size, and, and we'll have a better idea, you know, probably uh, after two or three of them. Lynch is uh, called up to active today. How, how do you do maybe limited snaps on good. Sunday, and he's a guy that can help you? Yeah, he's a guy that can help us. You know, that's why I brought him in. Uh, he's, he's played a little bit uh, over his career, and so we brought him into the practice squad and elevated him for the first game. Uh, as a role player, as depth on the defensive line, and he's he's one of those guys that's sort of a, a gritty, rugged, get it done guy. And uh, you need guys like that in your rotation. And um, he did a nice job in the game. And again, you got to be able to rotate your depth. Those guys can't play every snap. And so uh, it was good to see him uh, play well for us in a limited role. On Sunday, Will talked about how it felt like it was the first career game of his where he feels like he gave the game away. When you're going into the next week with somebody like that at the quarterback position. <laughs> Psychologically, how do you handle trying to correct things uh, and not get them to clam up or play differently than they would otherwise want to? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a learning process for guys because it's that that's heavy. Those those things weigh heavy on you. Um, you know, it's a learning process for me too. It weighs heavy on me too. So, uh, but those things you work through and you get ready. And then look, sun comes up the next day. You got another team you got to go play. You got to get ready to go. Um, and so that usually fixes most of those problems. Um, but I will say that there's. Uh, there's there's guys that handle it well, and then there's guys where they struggle. And I'd say so far, Will has handled it great. Even after the game, um, he was in a really, really good place, understood the mistakes, understood what he had to correct, um, and is ready to kind of move forward. And I think uh, you got to be mentally tough in this league to, to play football and then even tougher to be a, a quarterback in, in the league because it's always going to be on you. Whether you're deserving of it or not, it's always on you, whether you win or lose. Um, and that's a that's a pretty heavy crown to bear sometimes. But uh, Will is about as tough as they come, and, and he's more than up to the challenge to be able to handle that type of thing. And uh, that part to me was really encouraging when he came in on, on Monday and was 
open, honest, critical of his performance and ready to get ready for the next game. On the lines uh -oh. of that, is that kind of helped you with the quarterbacks you've dealt with in your coaching career? And you've talked to us about them being different personalities, different <laughs> styles. How much has that helped you prepare for this type of situation? Yeah, I mean, we're all sort of a product of our experiences. And I think that I've had some really good ones um, around some really good players. And so, yeah, it's it's really helpful to see because every quarterback, no matter how good they are, at some point loses a game. And it's just the way it goes. Um, you play long enough, you know, you get humbled enough times, you, you you understand that's part of playing in the NFL and part of being a leader and, and part of being a face of a franchise. And so I've been a part of some guys that understand that and know how to react to it. And, you know, I thought the one of the best ones that I've, you know, Peyton was great. Um, I, I got to see Joe learn how to do that. Uh, and then the one that I thought was really, really impressive was Matthew Stafford. Um, I thought he's he understood that process as good as anybody and had some really tough years uh, early in his career as well. So um, those guys learn, they figure it out, and they, they learn what, what leadership looks like. And again, I've said it before, but uh, real leadership is, is most impressive when it's hard um, and not necessarily when things are going great. So, um, And I think Will is totally up to that task. Hey, you said on Sunday you felt like that was the first game where you felt like you were kind of responsible for the way that it ended. How do you go about flushing that week to week and pulling back on mistakes but not changing the way that you want to play? Yeah, I mean, it's just coming to the work the same way I have every day, regardless of what happens the day before. And that's been the MO since day one. I feel like it's also a part of my game that I've improved on a lot in my career. There have been times where a game like that had, would have lingered for days, weeks, and really just kept, kept getting to me. But I really I didn't lose sleep Sunday night, you know. I knew that I'm a I'm a, a you know good quarterback in this league and obviously a lot of things to get better on, but watching that tape I still have that confidence and knowing that it's just kind of a, a fluke play that I can definitely learn from. So um yeah, I've still got all the confidence in the world in this team and everything, just gotta come to work every day, uh the same way regardless of what happens. What what's the time? As you say, what about um your footwork will? I know you have worked on that a lot in the off season. Did you feel good about it in the in the opener, or, or did you feel like you know there's some times where you kind of went backwards a little bit? What, what were your thoughts? I felt really good. I think in the beginning, I think maybe that first third down, I got a little bit, um, you know, wasn't like in the timing, or at least kind of like how my base was feeling at that point. And I can remember one other time where I moved off my base, sliding left in the pocket where I didn't need to. But other than that, I felt clean. Uh, I felt good in my base. Uh, I felt like I was delivering clean, accurate balls. I guess for the team, you think putting Sunday behind you, turning the attention quickly to the Jets, and maybe what's the challenge this week? I think it's just staying positive. I think that's definitely uh, something that we all need to remind ourselves with. It's uh, it's easy to kind of groan and get down and complain after a tough game like that, but I've been really impressed with the guys, how the guys have come into the building the last couple of days, flushed it, um, you know, instilling confidence in me, letting them know that they still got my back, which is great to feel in here as a quarterback, uh, especially after you know the tough end of that game. Um, so I'm just happy that we all have that right mindset and we're all coming in working in a professional manner, getting ready to get a win Sunday. A lot of the defensive guys after the game, like they wanted you to make sure that you knew that that loss wasn't on you. Like how is that to have your guys on the other side of the ball really uh, back you? Like that? Yeah, that's, like I said, it's great to, to, to feel that. We wanted to make sure that there was no division in the locker room after a loss like that. And um, there definitely hasn't been. And it's, it's great to see that and to hear um, those words from from those guys, and I just want to let them know that I'm I'm coming even harder this week for them, just to make sure that we're ready to get get back on track here this Sunday. So it's it's a tough feeling, it's a bad taste in our mouths, but we got a great opportunity to to rinse it out this weekend. Is that a situation where like you go to them like, damn man, my bad, that was on me. Like how does how does that type of like, dialogue go? Yeah, um, no, I think after that game, I, I it wasn't really anything. I didn't wasn't going around the locker room. Um, I think they all know that it's something that I you know it's not the best decision on my part, but it's something that I can learn from. And uh, there's, as, as Coach said, I, I'm, I'm going to put it on myself, and I still feel like it was on myself. But there's a lot of people that we know as just a whole team, as a whole unit, we can get better. And how if we want to win, uh, you know, win a championship, then we got to get better across the board. So um, it's great to know that we just have the personalities and the um, maturity in the locker room to be able to, to move on from those things, not point fingers and not let it linger on. Brian's approach towards you in the aftermath, maybe after the game, and then when you watch the film on Monday? Uh, I think it's just taking the lesson of any time you are trying to throw the ball away, never feel like you're, you need to do it in an unorthodox manner. You know, that's just a learning point. Like, I think I was telling him, like, 
the first time I did it in the first half. I can't remember a single time in my career where I even did that before that point. And it was just kind of like one of those things where I found myself in a similar situation. It worked before. Um, it was just weird how it ended up working out as I was getting hit. But uh, just that learning point along with the, the movement thing. But um, we know just from the tape also too, even though there's a lot of things to clean up, especially just with, from an operational standpoint and making sure that we're staying on schedule and first and second down, that uh, we still have a whole lot of confidence in this offense and in this team. So there's a lot of great things to take from it. Uh, but yeah. Was the processing, are you pleased with how you processed your decisions at the line of scrimmage and then making your reads on the defense and letting the ball go? Yeah, um, for sure. No, I think that other than, you know, I could pick, think of a few plays from a quarterback play for standpoint, whether just the missed go ball or um, an operational thing that I could have fixed. And then obviously that interception. Other than that, you know, a pretty clean operation, good balls uh, for the most part. Um, but just got to keep working to get better and be even more clean. From last year, from preseason, <laughs> on this that we're talking about, you'll learn from the throw. From last year and from the preseason, with you not sliding and taking some hits, you've said you'll learn from that. And you dove into contact in this game rather than showing that you've learned from those things. So. Can you understand that there's some doubt about I'll, I'll learn from it based on the fact that the one example we have, you haven't shown that you've learned from yeah, it? Yeah, I think it was um, – I was looking forward to putting that on display a little bit, but I think the couple opportunities where I did uh, where I did have the ability to pull it down and try to get that first down, I just felt like it was, it was right in that area where if I slid, I wouldn't have got it, and I just needed to just – be able to fall forward for a couple more. Um, so I think in third downs or in certain situations, it's going to be more critical for me to know where the sticks are once I get past them to be able to get down. And so I'm not just guessing and hoping that I need a few more or thinking that I need a few more before I get the first. But um, no, it was something that I was thinking of. Um, but I just think it was just those couple weird situations where I thought I needed a couple yards to get us that first. Brian said there was no yelling at you about the mistake or at any of the guys who made mistakes in this game but that there come times that he and guys on the staff will yell at guys. Have you have you seen that side of him and of the coaching staff? For sure. No, I think uh, towards the end of training camp, we had a day where coming off of probably our best day of camp, followed by one of our worst days where he, he let us have it. Um, so it's good to know that not every, I mean, no one's safe, you know, that we're all able to get it, and rightfully so. And we got to make sure that we're able to take it, understand that he just wants the best for us. and. Um, it's uh, it's good for him to show that side every so often. Well, it was pretty uncharacteristic for them on Monday night to give them eight straight scoring drives. What are you kind of seeing from them on tape right now? Uh, they're looking good. It's it's you know different defense in terms of where we think the holes are and where we think our opportunities are compared to last week, which is uh, which is cool. So I feel like we have some good stuff um, lined up for them. Obviously, a good defensive front, uh, and we're gonna have things to handle you know, those interior guys and in, in, in protection, and then. Secondary, you know, they're, 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 they're really good, really solid on the outside. Obviously, one, but four, two, he's going to be good out there for them. Um, and hopefully, we just find ways to, to take easy throws and then also find ways to develop one on one shots down the field. So, um, they're, you know, they're good for a reason. They, they do things well. DeMario does a great job of leading them in the middle there. And um, like I said, I, f I feel like, though, we do have some, some good things that we're going to be able to work against them and hopefully open up and give us some good ops. Uh, I saw him um, actually when I was at the Kentucky Derby. So we have um, our agents, are the, we have, we work with the same agents, so it's kind of funny. So, um, But great dude. I've spent a decent amount of time with him, hung out with him a handful of times, and looking forward to seeing him on Sunday. Do you know how old you are the first time you saw him play and amazing how he's had such a long career? No, I don't remember exactly how old, but uh, it is amazing. Um, you know, he's a Hall of Famer for a reason. Uh, yeah, he's still got a heck of an arm on him, and uh, I'm looking forward to watching him operate on Sunday. But uh, hopefully, our defense can do a good job of stumping him. A lot was made of your connection with Calvin. Um, what did you feel like it was on, on Sunday, and, and maybe on that, the one ball, I guess, where he put you in? Like, what did you guys talk to? Uh, yeah, I got hit when I was throwing that ball. I wish I could have put more on it. Like someone hit, someone got my shoulder. Talk about this, like the second half one where he was, where he, you wanted to come on. back. Yeah, I got you. We were trying to work a, a throw there when we weren't on the same page. But um, yeah, just the miscommunication thing there, something that we we worked a lot on that we'd hoping to 
bring out, but um, you know, we're just going to keep working. I, I got all the confidence in the world in him, and he does a great job of making sure that he lets me know that I, you know, I got everything it takes to, to be great in this league and that we have a potential to have a really good connection. So it's going to click, and we know it's going to come together on Sundays, and we're going to keep working every day to make sure that it does. Is it for you to have D Hop back? As Brian said, he's probably going to be close to a full workload this week. How big is that for you? Because you guys had such a good rapport with each other last year. Yeah, it's big. You know, I got a good feel for him. I know that. Uh, you know, understand how he feels space and, and the little you know, minute details that might be different with him compared to other guys. So uh, it's great for us. Uh, it's a, it's another threat for the defense to have to worry about. And uh, we're going to continue to to build this package and get him back to full speed. So it's great to have him back and definitely feel comfortable whenever I'm throwing the ball his, his way. Going back to that secondary, what are some of the things that Sauce Gardner brings just to make him so capable of traveling with receivers? Yeah, just his length, um, his ability at the line of scrimmage to, to create contact and to just make a receiver uncomfortable. We're going to have to find ways to uh, get off contact and, and get him running. So I think if we do that, um, uh, you know, we think we have some good things to, to do against him, but you know, we're not going to be attacking him every play. He's he's good for a reason. We've got to make sure where he's at at all times. There might be some routes or plays where, even though we might love it uh, because of the matchup, it might be one of those things where we're, we're moving on or, or trying to work something on the other side. So, um, you know, he's uh, he's got all the attributes. Uh, he got the size. He's got the the speed um, and the technique. So uh, he's he's a great player. We're going to keep working this week to find out different ways to hopefully uh, get some good good stuff to work against him. A lot of offenses over recent years, even in college. What do you think goes into taking it to the next level of mastery and comfort? I know you're, you're only a weekend with the regular season, but how, what's that process like? Uh, it's just time. There's no. Uh, there is, obviously, you're working your tail off to do all the mental reps that you can, but the the progression of comfort comes with reps, and it's really just the stuff you got to do. That's why every single time I step on this field and every time we get reps. Whether it's a walk through, a jog through period, or a full speed period, uh, those are so crucial for us. Um, you know, if you're, if you're a guy that's run the same offense for six years straight, uh, even though you're never really supposed to take a rep off, you might be you might be able to go through the motions a little bit more. But none of us have, uh, you know, earned that response or earned that ability yet. And we got to come out every single day, um, like it's a Super Bowl rep every single time, because that's the only way we're going to be able to get to where we want to with learning this offense. Well, how did you learn about yourself? You're doing the same all the time from from game one to two. That that period. Uh, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to play my game. I, I, I know that I, I have what it takes. I don't have to do anything different um, to to make it work for this team. Um, I think watching the film, it's not like I, I I felt like I needed to change many things from a technique or or just operation standpoint. Um, obviously, things to get better at, but uh, there's no there was no freak out moment of oh gosh, things has got to change. Um, I'm gonna keep being myself, just as all these other guys are. We're just gonna be better versions of ourselves.